the Duke and Duchess of Sussex have landed in Morocco for the start of a three-day visit to the North African country, and are staying as guests of the King of Morocco in one of his palatial royal residences tonight. Harry, 34, and Meghan, 37, who wore a Valentino dress, landed in Casablanca on a commercial flight on Saturday evening and were welcomed to the country by Britain's ambassador to Morocco Thomas Riley. The couple were two hours late for their welcoming ceremony following the knock-on effects of an earlier delay to their scheduled plane which flew from the UK. In darkness Harry inspected a sabre-carrying guard of honour from the auxiliary forces, dressed in their pristine white uniforms and formed in two rows. The heavily pregnant Duchess walked behind her husband as he looked over the troops who had been patiently waiting for over an hour. She is seven months pregnant and expecting to have their child in April. But despite spending a busy few days in New York for her luxury baby shower, which featured a string of A-list celebrities, Meghan looked relaxed and wore a striking red Valentino dress. A Kensington Palace spokeswoman said, Their Royal Highnesses are very much looking forward to the visit and are grateful to their hosts and the British Embassy for arranging such an interesting program. They are particularly pleased that they will have the opportunity to meet so many young Moroccans over the next few days. The couple began their visit that will see them visit Morocco's famous Atlas Mountains and tour the capital Rabat by walking along a red carpet that led to Casablanca Airport's Royal Suite. As they entered the building they were offered milk and dates a traditional welcome in Morocco. Pregnant Meghan appeared to pass but Harry could be seen nibbling on a date. A large motorcade of black limousines was waiting to take Meghan and Harry and their entourage of nine, which includes a hairdresser, to meet Morocco's Crown Prince Moulay Hassan. The Crown Prince welcomed Meghan and Harry to their royal accommodation after they had sped to Rabat in their motorcade. The 15-year-old shook hands with the couple at the entrance to their royal villa in the grounds of King Mohammed's palace. It was believed to be the first official meeting between the British royal family and the future monarch of Morocco. When the couple first arrived, Harry acknowledged a guard of honour outside the villa and they walked a few paces to where the young foreign royal was waiting. After the greeting, the Duke and Duchess were again offered dates and milk with orange blossom, served to special guests in the country and a feature of Moroccan weddings when the bride and groom feed each other the food. Meghan declined to sample the treats but Harry picked a date from the top of a large mound on a platter. The Crown Prince's mother, Princess Lala Salma, has been the subject of much speculation after disappearing from public life more than a year ago, with rumours circulating she may be living abroad. Her son left Harry and Meghan to settle in after just a few minutes and headed off into the royal compound. Mr. Riley said he was hugely excited about the couple's visit which is designed to strengthen ties between the UK and Morocco and highlight the work being done to improve access to education, particularly among young girls in rural communities. It is understood that Harry, 34 and his pregnant wife, Meghan, 37, will be staying as guests of King Mohammed VI in one of his palatial private residences this evening. King Mohammed is Morocco's leading businessman and banker. The Moroccan royal family has one of the largest fortunes in the world, estimated to be in the region of four billion pounds. Although it has not been officially confirmed that they are meeting the king himself, it is known that they will be meeting various members of the ruling royal family over the next few days, including, it is anticipated, the crown prince, Moulay Hassan, 15. Officials could not say whether the couple would meet the king's wife, Princess Lala Salma. Mystery surrounds her whereabouts after she reportedly divorced the king last year, although nothing has been confirmed by the royal court. After an official arrival tonight, the couple will enjoy a quiet evening before heading up into the Atlas Mountains tomorrow, where they will tour educational projects and Meghan will receive a traditional henna design on her right hand. A spokesperson for the Duke and Duchess said, Their Royal Highnesses are very much looking forward to the visit and are grateful to their hosts and the British Embassy for arranging such an interesting program. They are particularly pleased that they will have the opportunity to meet so many young Moroccans over the next few days. Heralding the royal couple's arrival in Morocco, Mr. Riley said, 
It's hugely exciting to have their royal highnesses the Duke and Duchess of Sussex here for the next few days and I'm really excited to showcase the vital roles that girls' education and youth employment are playing in shaping modern Morocco. When we began planning for this visit, I had a very clear view in my mind of the story we wanted this visit to tell. It's the same story we've been telling consistently at this embassy for the last 20 months since my arrival here. This official visit by the Duke and Duchess of Sussex will highlight Morocco's focus on women's empowerment, girls' education, inclusivity and the encouragement of social entrepreneurship. From a girls' education project in the High Atlas Mountains, to programs working with children with disabilities and young people with mental health challenges, to meeting with young social entrepreneurs, their royal highnesses will be shown firsthand the transformational impact of community-based programs and Morocco's changing social attitudes towards women. Harry and Meghan will visit the town of Annie on Sunday as their tour of the North African country begins in earnest with a couple learning about the Moroccan NGO Education for All founded by Michael McHugo. The organization builds boarding houses for girls aged 12 to 18 to ensure that youngsters from rural communities in the mountain region are able to access secondary education. During the visit the Duchess will take part in a henna ceremony an ancient custom that is thought to have its roots in North Africa, and have a design painted on her hand. Later, at another Education for All boarding house, the couple will meet its founder and Harry will invest Mr. McHugo with an MBE, awarded in the New Year Honours list for his work improving gender equality in education in Morocco. Mr. McHugo first visited Morocco in 1973 and later started running educational adventure holidays in the country. He set up his NGO after meeting John Wood, the founder of a non-profit organization dedicated to promoting education called Room to Read. The first Education for All EFA, project was opened in 2007 and it now has 50 EFA girls enrolled at university. While in Andy the Duke and Duchess will also visit a secondary school to meet students, teachers and watch the pupils playing football.